I mean, can fans expect a sequel anytime soon? And Or would you rather see the novel maybe become a TV series and be in front of the camera, <laughs> Jay? Uh, well, I don't know if I would be in front of the camera. We would hire like actors for that. You know, there is definitely interest for it to move onto screen in some format, which I did not write the book for that, but I was surprised when people started reading it saying, no, this is, this is made for film, which I'm, I think is exciting. Um, there, I think there, well, there's definitely a sequel. I, when I wrote the book initially, I thought it was gonna be a one and done. Um, and, and the, the book resolves, but there is an, this kind of twist of fate ending where you can see the story can continue. Um, I will say this much. I absolutely have arced out what that next book would be. It, I have written the opening because it opens with a bang. And I also had to kind of mess with reality, so to speak, kind of like I did in the end of the last book to kind of keep the reader on their toes with where I'd go with the story. But beyond these characters, uh, I really am interested in telling other stories. And when I handed in my manuscript early last summer, uh, I remember having like this dopamine crash and withdrawal from writing because I really love those final polishing steps of my manuscript and I needed to write something. So I woke up one day and I remember just having this kind of vision for a story. And I thought I was gonna write out like one or two pages, turn into 10 pages. And it has nothing to do with these characters. It's this kind of dystopian futuristic story. And I want to eventually move beyond these characters to show people that I really do love crafting stories and characters kind of beyond what is inspired by my life. Jay, you're making us all look bad during quarantine, right? Can't you just be lazy or something? Like set the bar low, my man. Like this is, it's too much. It's just too much, but this sounds awesome. And the sequel is gonna be, I'm sure, incredible. You know, I have to ask, because you've been publicly open about the fact that you and Tyra no longer have a speaking relationship, despite your amazing time together on the show, America's Next Top Model. Mm -hmm. What's the story behind that? Is it bad blood or is it just a natural parting of ways? Oh, uh, no, there's no bad blood, actually. And, and I have so much respect for her uh, and everything that she has done it, for the industry and really for, you know, and what she represents to so many young brown and black girls and boys and in terms of giving opportunity and being, you know, representative of as a woman of color who is in the industry kind of breaking down barriers. Um, and, and by the way, uh, you know, it might sound a little strange. I've not said this in any interview, but uh, I've you know, Keisha Cash, who's on the poster behind me, you know, it's, it's not Tyre Banks. It's inspired, obviously, by my life, but it was really important for me to tell the story authentically. And I was, uh, someone advised me early, early on about, you know, maybe what if you made Keisha Kirsten um, so that people don't think that it's Tyra and she's white? And I said, hmm, you don't have no idea how racist that statement is. Did someone go to, <laughs> did someone say to Lauren Weissenberger, Hmm, Miranda Priestley, you know, maybe she should be for Chinese or Latin, so they don't think it's Anna Wintour. I, I just think it's it's just a it's a weird double standard which still exists in our industry. So really as an homage to her, uh, meaning Tyra, I kept this book very authentic uh, to kind of my experience. But that being said, you know, I think our relationship definitely there was a natural progression. Um, there were some things that happened from behind the scenes of the show. Uh, a lot of people did not know, and I could not talk about it before contractually, but I did leave the show early on after cycle eight. Um, my contracts were up, and I felt that I could not kind of bring what I initially brought to the show in terms of hiring all the creative, working on the creative. Um, and by that time, the show was a huge success. Everyone's hands were in there, and I was doing other projects. Uh, I did go to Tyra directly without it going through any people because that was kind of our agreement. And I just said, you know, I'm going to move on. I mean, she's a businesswoman. I said, there are other things that I'd like to achieve and do. That created a real tension. Uh, uh, you know, we were very close even outside of the show and we, she chose not to speak to me. She was very kind of offended by that. You know, and as I look back at it now at 48, I, I realize I just didn't have the tools to kind of deal with that kind of emotional um, kind of discord, so to speak. Unfortunately, I was kind of asked to come back for one cycle, <laughs> for cycle nine, and they, they said they could not cast someone to replace me at the time. They said, everything will be the same. We would love to have you back. I went back and she didn't want to speak to me when cameras weren't rolling and that created 
ultimately a very, very kind of difficult divide. Things never really recovered at that point. Yes, did I continue on beyond that cycle? I was offered you know, a great deal and a great opportunity. And we did kind of mend things, so to speak, but right. it never really went back to normal. And that's the, the, the long and short of it. And, uh, but the last time I saw her, you know, we had a great conversation. It was a, you know, a couple of years ago and, and we talked about her son and, you know, so, you know, things are, you know, if I were to kind of sit down and have to speak with her, I think it would be a very civil conversation. Yeah, sometimes time heals all wounds, Jay. Sometimes, not all, not all wounds yes. and not all time, but sometimes. Well, what's next for you? I, I'm hesitant to ask because now you're going to make me kick my, you know, ambitions into overdrive here. But what's next for you? What What are the projects you do you have in the works that you can maybe talk about? Oh, you know, well, you know how it is. <laughs> they always say, well, you can't talk about this or that because it's not announced. I can say that even in the midst of this tour and this pandemic, there is a project that I am working on that will announce soon. I, I just feel very kind of blessed and, 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 and actually in having the opportunity for people to kind of see me in a different light. I've kind of shattered that lifestyle box of just fashion, beauty, you know, producer, television personality. And now because people understand that, you know, with my book, I did do the writing myself. Uh, I did not have a ghost writer. Uh, I did not, I had a great writing mentor who, definitely challenged me every time I kind of submitted a her a draft and we actually would do a FaceTime kind of similar to this and we would just we would talk about what I was doing in that draft so people are now seeing me for kind of my writing capabilities so to speak so I'll, I'll say that much there's definitely some really kind of big and exciting projects in the works right now maybe Jay Manuel 2024 for president I'm just saying it's possible. <laughs> never that would never <laughs> You never know. It's been a weird year. But Jay, thank you so much for being here today. I'm so excited about your book and just so happy for you. You honestly have the best shirts in the game, if I do say so much. <laughs> thank you. And like, like your title of your show, Reality Check, because in my um, chapter 12 in my book, which is when everything really starts to go off the rails, it's titled Reality Check. Well, there you go. We all need one, especially <laughs> this year. People, don't forget to pick up a copy of Jay's debut novel, The Wig, The and The Meltdown. Or you can download it on any e-reader that you have available. Trust me, you will not be able to put it down.